So Eric, uh, tell us what was the inspiration for the film? You know, a few years ago, nobody were talking about chat GPT. And, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was just an abstraction, but I was really, really interested by the idea of how work is not only a necessity, but also uh, an idea that we believe is very important, like our professional title is important. It's like a whole, a whole existence rotates around the idea of work, you know, especially here in, in North America, yeah. as in Europe where I live. Anyway, so I, it started as, a, as, a, as an exploration of how, if we can get rid, rid of that idea somehow or, or adjust it, out of a hypothesis then, three years ago, that work that we could be replaced by technology. Yeah. Suddenly the film comes out, uh, you know, um, um, two months ago, and this topic is all over the place. Mm -hmm. This topic is all over the place. I mean, the, the, the suddenly is that people really realize that even creative, creative jobs can be replaced, like mm -hmm. a writer or a, yeah. you know, even music. That's yeah. what has happened in the past month. So surprisingly, and I'm very happy about it. The film came in a very, the very right time. So we premiered in uh, in CPH Docs. It's yeah. this, uh, um, probably the best festival in Europe, and it became the most watched uh, film at the festival. Mm -hmm. So that's a good start. And now I'm here in Toronto. Nice, nice. <laughs> so um, there's a couple of scenes in the film. Like, you know, this this whole idea of like every day you got to be a Every day you got to be working or be like confident and be yeah. on the ball on the same page and blah blah blah, and I, you know, and then a lot of that is is very stressful to the normal human being. So yeah. I, I've, I've seen those scenes in the in the film. So tell us a little bit about that and why you included you know, that in the if film. If you look at work as an idea, it started basically 350 years ago with the industrial revolution. You know, at that time. It was the perfect idea for what was needed then. Yeah. We had to build the industry, the factories, and so on. Now, 350 years later, with the development of technology and so on, that idea is not compatible. We, we don't have to devote our life to work in the same way. So there is this strange paradox that we could work less. Yeah. I mean, if you just look from the 70s until now, what took like 100 people uh, in the 70s to do, to produce something, it today it requires like half of that people, right? right? So 50 people. So, but yet we're still working as much. So it's yeah. like a paradox. Here. Yes. So I think it's like we are stuck in that, <laughs> that mentality. And it has enormous, in some countries, it has an enormous cost. Like in, in South Korea, where we shot a chapter of the film, even in our, in, in the Western world generally, it has definitely a cost in terms of health, uh, in South Korea, for example, people don't know so much about it. You have generations after generation of children who grew up never meeting, especially their fathers, you know, so because they are always working. You know? Right. So, I mean, it's, it's really, now we have this opportunity to really rethink work, but, and really take the opportunity of working less. But it's, it's, it's a bigger challenge than what, than what we think. So speaking of challenge, uh, bringing this narrative of this film together, how challenging was that? And like, how, I mean, especially when it comes to something new as like artificial intelligence. Yeah. yeah. You know, I work in, with a method, uh, I mean, it's, I work with creative documentary. I, it's a very sort of, uh, it's an essay film in the sense that we go from country to country. It's shot in four countries. Characters are there. It's very character-driven, but it's even more like idea-driven, yes. you know, right? Yeah. And I really like this way of working. And I think, you know, we who do documentaries, we love the fact that we work with unpredictability. You don't, ne you never really know what's going to happen, yeah. what a cart is going to say. But it's, these are real stories, real people, and the film has a very sort of cinematic approach. I work with a DOP of uh, Ruben Ostlund, who won the Palme d'Or twice. Yes, absolutely. In Cannes. So, so it's, it's a very, it's really made for the, for the big screen. Yeah. Uh, but the response I get, which I'm very happy about, as I mentioned, the most watched film at the CPH Docs Film Festival, is that people are, are really connect to this language. Yeah. You know, to, the, to the, it's very musical, it's very aesthetic, but it's, it's idea-driven in a sense, it's, it's a think piece, you would yeah. say. 
So despite the topic being, you could say boring. I mean, it works. Sounds like a boring topic. And, and when I and I was talking about the film to my friends, they were like, "Oh, sounds interesting," you know. But uh, this is such a universal question that Absolutely. it seems to work well. Yeah. Okay. So from your perspective as a director, um, what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence? You know, and I, the future of it. Look. Yeah. It, a few years ago, we thought of like out automation, artificial intelligence, something that would replace like boring jobs, which is great, you know, which is still also the case. But we would never imagine that, in which has been a shock with especially chat GPT, to be very frank, that it was the creative part of, of uh, you know, producing images, producing text, producing, producing all, the, all that we thought was the last thing to be replaced. And as a director, the creative part of this job is what I like. I don't want to be replaced with that. I don't, yeah. so I don't, in some way, I don't really see the point in replacing joyful, you know, passion, like make, being a filmmaker. Although I can see that there's enormous potential with artificial intelligence in, in saving time. Yes. yes. Time is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the film I've done is really about that. With this, all this extra time that we will have, are we prepared to devote it to something else? It takes imagination because it's really easy, even for creative people, to just you know, be stuck doing the same thing. But what if you have double the time that you usually have? What do you want to do? What would you do if you didn't have to work? If you got money every month? with a basic income, you know, not, not like, I mean, talking good money, like having a way which is good. How would you differentiate your life? What would you explore and discover? This is what the question is, the exploration of the film, but it's a question for all of us. Oh. It's a very individual question. Because mm -hmm. every one of us consider meaningful, meaningful different things, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And so the changes we're about to face requires an enormous amount of, of of tolerance, of respecting the fact that, you know, maybe someone will go surfing for 10 years in the line, and then they will invent the new vaccine, and then it will yeah. just, or it will, they will never work, while someone else will just work a lot. This is really up for grabs. Now tell us, how does it feel for your film to be here at Hot Talks this year? It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, as European, I always have this feeling of being too European when I come uh, to this other side of, of the ocean. But with this film, because of the topic, work and the future of work, it seems to work really, really well. It was sold out at the screening. People respond to it really, really well. So maybe for the first time, I don't feel as European as I <laughs> usually do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And good luck with the film. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.